ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्णा हरे हरे बोलिस थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग एंड वांटेड टू सीक द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ राधा माधव राधे श्याम सुंदर कृष्ण बलराम बाल गोपाल गोनीता शिला गोपाल गुरुदेव एंड दिस एम विल डू इट सो दैट वी कैन टॉक अबाउट दिस इनक्रेडिबल आचार्य uh ramnujacharya is his appearance day today his birthday and um he had a huge role and uh his sampradaya has a huge role currently in sanatan dharma so let's have a look at who he is in according to authorized sources there are four vaishnav sampradayas and um they are headed by some uh, incredible personalities everything comes from krishna but there are these four some of them one is headed by lord brahma who is the secondary creator so after lord vishnu has created the material universes he um incarnates into every universe and from that incarnation which is called um garuda daksha vishnu lord brahma manifests and so therefore he is the second secondary creator and he is given the power by vishnu to create so he started the sampradaya is called the brahma madhav uh, sampradaya brahma sampradaya and the principal guru or acharya who came in recent times if you like is madhavacharya another sampraday is shri shri sampraday and that's um lakshmi devi and shri sampraday's main acharya is ramanujacharya so he is the person that we wanted to focus on today because it's his birthday the other two sampraday's are lord shiva the rudra sampraday Vishnu Swami is the main acharya there. Then we have the four Kumaras sampradaya, and uh, Nimbak acharya is the main guru of that sampradaya. So this is just a different little, little different format. If we look at the timelines after Krishna left this world, then kali yug set in and kali yug is the worst of the ages because kali yug um the legs of dharma have practically disappeared when krishna is present kali yug cannot enter just like when the sun is um out no there's no question of darkness there's no question of darkness but when the sun goes darkness sets in so when krishna left this world darkness set in in the form of kali yug and um, it had quite a devastating effect because even the uh, most important or most uh, intellectual class the brahmin class started misusing the vedas and performing animal sacrifices so lord buddha came and he is a uh, one of the 10 avatars he came so he is empowered by krishna to come and he advised to displace the yoga the um, uh, yagya the vedas stop doing the uh, the yagyas according to the vedas stop animal sacrifice he came 2500 years ago and he basically uh, negated the value of the vedas the vedas are spoken by krishna himself written by krishna as in the form of yasde but again in the form of buddha the lord decided to displace the vedas for a, pre- a period of time and that worked it stopped the animal sacrifices and then uh, 1000 years later shankaracharya came in 500 ad 
and Sankaracharya re-established the Veda. Sankaracharya is no different from Lord Shiva. And he was given the task by the Supreme Lord to re-establish the Vedas, which he did very successfully. But he also uh, preached monis monism, that one can become God. Everybody is God. You can become God. I can become God which actually is a philosophy that the Vaishnav Sampradayas do not agree with. We can never become God because we are always servant of God. God is God. God can never come under illusion. We are under illusion. So the Sampradayas, the Acharyas from the Sampradayas started to descend in order to re-establish Vaishnav philosophy. First to come was uh, Vishnu Swami in the Rudra Sampradaya. Then Ram Nujacharya came from the Sri Sampradaya. So, and again today we are talking about Ram Nujacharya. Then Nimbakacharya came in 1180. And that's one of the four Kumara Sampradaya. And then we had Madhacharya, who comes in the Brahma Sampradaya. And then 500 years ago, just over 500 years ago, Lord Chaitanya came and he embraced all the four Sampradayas. But he took initiation, he took Diksha, although God doesn't need to take Diksha, but he took Diksha in the Brahma Sampradaya from Ishwara Puri. So, and then Shri Prabhupada came and spread Krishna consciousness throughout the world. So this is a little idea of the different uh, Acharya, the Sampradayas, the Acharyas, the deities, mainly Krishna, Vishnu, Ram, the Singh forms, the philosophy, which is quite similar. They basically um, stop the notion that we become can become God. That's basically what they but they have slightly different radiations between the different sampadayas. And the mood of the devotees is also a little bit different from by each sampadaya. So let's have a look at Ramana He's born uh, in uh, uh, 1017, so that's uh, 1006 years ago. 1006 years ago. And his family belonged to the caste of Vadama Smarta Brahmins, who were formal Vedic scholars. Ramanujacharya's parents, they were Keshavacharya and Bhudevi, prayed to the Lord for a special soul who would glorify the Sri Vishnu. And the Lord answered their prayers. Lakshman, the first expansion of the Lord, appeared as a Brahmanuja. Hmm. So actually, Ramanuja is Lakshman which is very interesting. And Ram means um, Supreme Lord. Anuj is the brother or younger brother of the Lord. He was married at the age of 16. After his marriage, unfortunately, his father passed away and the family moved to Kanchipuram. And Kanchipuram is in the south of Bharat, um, further down from Tirupati, he comes to Kanchipuram. Now, he initially he became a student of Yadav Prakash. But Yadav Prakash followed the Sankaracharya philosophy. He was a Mayavadi. Mayavadi means that one who believes that one can become God. Although Ramanujacharya didn't agree with the philosophy of becoming one with God, he didn't leave. He was an excellent student, but he didn't agree with the teacher's conclusions. One day, Ramanujacharya he was massaging his guru's back as Yadav Prakash explained a verse containing the words Kafyasam Mundarikam Evam Aksini. Now, following the interpretation of Sankaracharya, Yadav Prakash explained that Kafi means monkey, Asanam means as, as. The verse therefore interpreted to mean Lord Vishnu's lotus eyes are as red as a monkey's ass. <laughs> That's not a very complimentary uh, interpretation. 
Ramanuja cried at this interpretation and finally challenged his guru, stating that this was incorrect. And Ramanuja explained that kapyasam means a lotus which sits upon the water and flourishes by drinking. So the meaning of the verse is that Lord, the lotus eyes of Vishnu are as beautiful as a red lotus which blossoms in the water. That's much better interpretation than this one here. <laughs> Yadav Prakash was defeated by his disciple. And he was so unhappy, he was so angry, he plotted with his other disciples to kill Ramanuja. This is a false ego issue. But the plot failed as Ramanuja's cousin, Govinda, informed him. Ramanuja eventually left the school of Yadav Prakash. His mother advised him to take guidance from the non-Brahman disciple of Sri Ram Yamunacharya named Kanchipurna. He was greatly inspired by him, but his wife considered Kanchipurna as a low-born Shudra because Ramanuja was a Brahman by birth. And um, he was taking shel shelter of somebody who's not a Brahman, considered a Shudra which is actually good, which is not bad. But his wife was not happy. His, uh, Ramanuja's wife was thinking, this Kanchipurna is lower caste than my husband. Eventually, due to her behavior towards Kanchipurna, Ramanuja left home and took sannyas. <laughs> Before this, Ramanuja went to meet Yamunacharya, the great guru at that time. But he just passed away. When Ramanuja saw him, saw yeah, Yamunacharya, he had passed away. But there were three fingers on his right hand which were closed. Now this was a little unusual. So Ramanuja understood why. And he made three vows. And these vows released the fingers. He promised to teach the people in general the religion of surrender to Vishnu. As he did so, one of Yamunacharya's fingers relaxed. He vowed to comment on the hymns of the Alvas, the South Indian saints. And with this, the second finger relaxed. So first thing he said, I'll preach Vishnu, surrender to Vishnu, everywhere. Second, he will make a commentary on the songs of the Alvas. And the Alvas were very great um, poets and, and saints. So this was an amazing thing to do. And then finally, third vow was he'll write a scholarly commentary on the Vedanta Sutras, expounding the principles of Sri Vaishnavism as the ultimate truth of the Vedas. And with that, the, the last clinched finger also relaxed. So that a, a look of spiritual peace came over the lotus face of Ramanuja Charya's divine master, Sri Yamunacharya, although he never met him. Uh, living wise, but still he considered uh, Yamunacharya as his acharya, as if to say that he could now depart peacefully, knowing that his mission was in good hands. Soon after taking sannyas, Ramanuja established his own monastery or ashram, where he began training disciples in the systematic Vaishnava interpretation of Vedanta, as well as in the path of devotion to Vishnu. He took many prominent disciples, including his former teacher, Yadha Prakash. So there's a transformation. <laughs> Yadha Prakash became a disciple of uh, Yamunacharya, uh, Ramanujacharya. Ramanujacharya, under the guidance of Mahapunna, a prominent disciple of Yamunacharya, went to the great Goshti Punna. Goshti Punna was a great uh, Acharya as well at that time. And he accepted initiation in the, into the Vaishnava mantra. Gosti Punna, however, initially would not give him the mantra. But after Ramanuja promised that he would not share the mantra with anyone, he was given the mantra. Why? Gosti Punna was thinking that this mantra is very powerful. It should only be, it will liberate anybody who chants the mantra. So he didn't want to share it with anybody except those who are serious. But Ramanuja's mood was different, as we will see in a minute. Anyway, Ramanuja promised, I won't share the mantra. 
when Ramanuja Acharya realized the importance of the mantra and others begged him for it, he shared it with all. <laughs> Gastipuna, Gastipuna became angry and he asked Ramanuja, why did you do this? I told you, it's supposed to be a secret and you promised. So then Ramanuja explained that if the mantra liberates everyone, then he is happy to go to hell to dis for disobeying the order of the Guru. So this is the mood of Ramanuja Charya. Gostifuna understood the greatness of Ramanuja. The mantra was Om Namo Narayanai. So glorification of Narayan. Just chant by Ajamil chanting the name of Narayan, he was liberated. He went back to Godhead. So, and he was a sinful person. So this is a very powerful mantra. Ramanuja preached far and wide in South India, establishing 74 centers and had many thousands of disciples, including 700 sannyasis and 12,000 celebrate students. This is something amazing. In those days, thousand years ago, transportation may not have been so good. So to actually establish so many centers and devotee disciples is quite an achievement. But he also showed that some of his householders were very devoted. So the sannyasis, they would become very proud. Oh, we are great. We are renounced. We are knowledgeable. But Ramanuja would try to reduce their pride. So one time, middle of the night, Everybody was sleeping. The sannyasis and the brahmacharis were all sleeping. And Ramanuja, oh, somebody was, just took their coffins and swapped them all around. Coffins is the underwear. When they woke up, there was a big hoo-ha. Where's my coffin? He's got mine. You've got mine. This, that, the other. It was a total fiasco. So Ramanuja showed that uh, sannyasis and these brahmacharis, they are actually even attached to their coffins, underwear. <laughs> and then he, 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 he demonstrated how the householders behave, some of them at least. So in the middle of the night, there was Tanur Das uh, and his wife. They were um, sleeping at home. Middle of the night, Somebody came and they wanted to take the jewelry. So they saw Danudas, his wife, sleeping on one side. They took her earring. She saw who did it. Somebody took him, taking her earring. So she turned around for them to take the other earring. It wasn't that she protested, but she turned around, just pretending to still be asleep. Turned around. But when she turned around, the thief ran away. And in the morning, oh, Tanudas, his wife, told his wife, told her husband, this happened. I turned around for him to take the other earring. And Tanudas was very really upset. He said, why did you turn around? Don't you have faith in God that that earring would have gone to that person? You didn't have to interfere with God's plan. <laughs> you should have just stayed where you were. And he would have got the other earring as well. So they were not attached, although they were householders. So the important thing is to re realize that in this world, that um, if we are attached to anything, we will have an issue. We will have a problem. We will stay in this world. So, And there's some wonderful pastime in Jagannath Puri. Uh, he went there one time, Ramanujacharya. And he saw that the worship of Jagannath was not necessarily according to Vedic standards. They were doing tantric um, services to Jagannath, perhaps a little bit, um, you know, not uh, quite according to how it should be done. So he called a meeting the next morning of the Pujaris and the administrators and the managers and the king. And everybody was a little bit anxious because they knew Ramana Yachari was very strict. Then he perhaps wanted to establish uh, a proper system of worship. 
So they were quite anxious. In the middle of the night, however, Jagannath transported Ramanuja Charya hundreds of miles away <laughs> through by his divine um, his divine um, uh, strength and opulence. And in the morning, everybody gathered, no sign of Ramanuja Charya. There was a little bit of relief. And Ramanuja Charya realized, mm, Jagannath likes the worship as it is. He doesn't want me to interfere. <laughs> so this shows the glory of Ramanuja Charya, because Jagannath himself um, inter intervened. So, amazing. He lived for 100 years. And he established uh, the he established um, Sri Vaishnavism throughout South Bharat, and Vaishnav and Sri Sampradaya is actually very powerful. It has students who are truly um, well versed in Vedic uh, scriptures. They know how to perform the rituals according to scriptures. And in his monasteries, there are very serious students of Vedanta. And if we look at the temples around in the south of Bharat, they have great uh, um, opulence in their worship of the deities. This is all due to Ramanujicharya. So, any uh, uh, are there any questions or any comments? Um, Lokeshwar Karuna. Okay, we can stop there. Ramnujitari ki jai, Shri Sampada ki jai.